How come the how come the preachers on TV never talk about these hard ones? They always get the easy ones, like the prodigal son came home and it was a big party. Oop de doo. They never talk about pick up your cross and follow me, deny yourself, lose your life. It's like never do those. I heard a, a joke one time. I think it might have something to do with this. So listen to the joke. It's not that funny. <laughs> I was going to give you a heads up. I'm warning you. So the little boy and the dad are going to the airport. And they're waiting uh, for mom to come back from the trip. And they're watching the planes take off and land. The airports are very exciting. The little boy asks the father, says, how do the airplanes fly? The dad says, he thinks about it for a while, then he begins to explain about how a vacuum is created underneath the wing when the plane goes fast enough through the air, the curved curvature of the wing creates a vacuum underneath the wing, creates a positive lift. And the plane is able to overcome that gravity because of the lift of the vacuum under the wing. And the little boy says, Dad, I thought the, air, the pilot flew the plane. That's, that's right. The pilot flies the plane. So both things are true, right? The pilot flies the plane. That's all you need to know at one level. And actually how planes actually fly by physics is a whole other story, but it's also true. I tell you that because there are two things that are true in the gospel. The pilot flies the plane, and also there's a very complicated physics happening. So in the first stage of life, in the very first stages of our lives, we tell people the first part, which is pretty simple, and it's true. So for instance, with the youth group today, in the youth group, in their class, they're reading a book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens. Jerry Sharp is here to be my Vanna White, and he will show you the cover. Woo Jerry and another teacher are uh, leading that class. Everything in the book is true. Everything. So, for instance, they said, look, the, the first thing it says is you, your life is made up of your habits, and the things you do, do repeatedly will, will help make you who you are. So be careful what you do over and over again. And decide what you want to do over and over again, because that's going to end up creating your life. The second habit says um, you need to plan where you want to go. If, if you're going to get there, you've got to plan it out where you want to go. If you're the one in charge, you plan it out. Where, draw, draw a map for your life. The third one says something like uh, you're the driver, so you're going to have to set up some discipline and time and uh, map out your schedule and how are you going to actually get to where you want to go. It goes on from there. But those three make pretty good sense, right? You drive the car, you decide where the car is going to go, and you got to start it up and go. Sounds very simple. It's all true. So in this class and part of the book, we're going to build those kids up. We're going to build up their self-esteem, show them they can do lots of things in life. They are in control. We're going to build up their self-confidence, saying, look, there are so many things you weren't sure you could do. If you just try, we think you can do it. We're going to build up their sense of competency. They can control uh, their feelings inside. They, they decide what they'll be angry at, what they'll be happy about. They decide. Not the world around them. They will be deciding how they react to the whole world. So we build up their self-esteem, build up their confidence, build up their sense of competency. We will make them strong. We want them to know their own strength and know their own courage and know just how powerful they can be how they can decide where they want to go and how they're going to get there and they're going to do it they'll be very successful that's all true right I think it's going to be true so we're going to teach that and then later on when they come into church they're going to hear something completely different <laughs> When they come into church and they hear Jesus say something like, 
You have to die to yourself. You have to suffer through a lot of things. And if you give your life away, that's how you're going to find it. Which sounds just the opposite of what we just told them. One says, you are strong. The other one says, give yourself away. One says, you are competent. The other says, be a servant of all. One says, you and your ego are so competent that you can do all things in life. Jesus says, surrender your life and give it away and you'll find your real life. <laughs> so, you remember on the first story I told the bad joke? That both things were true, right? The pilot does fly the plane. And the plane flies because of vacuum under the wings. Both are true, right? And both things I'm, we're going to tell kids and tell people are both true, even though they sound like they're different. I think in the first half of your life, the first thing we do when we're growing up as human beings, we learn, or we hopefully we can learn how to be competent and strong in ourselves, gain your identity, have some self-esteem, have some self-confidence, build up your character, know who you are, live by your principles. That's true. That's how you will live a happy life. On the other hand, when you get to a certain stage in life later on, sometimes after teenhood, what you have built up actually begins to go away. And sometimes you can't know that until you get there. So for instance, sometimes You'll, you'll come up against something of which you are powerless. You do not have power. We taught you when you were in seventh grade, you had power. At another point in life, you will find you don't have control over some things. We, it's almost like when you have a, have a young baby in a crib and you want to make everything really soft for them and you put the nice blankets in there and you put the pillows and you put the little thing above their head that kind of makes noise and the kid is so happy and you, sooner or later the kid's going to find out this isn't the whole world. I heard Dr. James Dobson said and he was making a joke, he said maybe we should put, string our cribs with bobbed wire so kids will find out there really is pain in the world. Well you know Dr. Dobson, that crazy man always stringing bobbed wire up but the truth is, at some point in life, you bump up against things you cannot control. You're not going to change the war in Syria. You're not, you're not going to save that baby who's dying from Ebola. You're not going to be able to overcome that habit you developed, that addiction. You're not going to be able to change your family. You're not going to be able to stop that divorce. You're not going to be able to help that street person and change their life. There are so many things that actually you're not in control of. But Jesus says, actually, you're in a good place now. When you begin to see that there are things in life that are beyond you, that you are finite and you are temporary, and you can't hold on to everything you built up. Everything you put together in a nice little construction project, it begins to fall apart. And it begins to go down. If nothing else, if nothing else happens in your life, you're going to die. You can't even stop it. On the way to that end, gosh, a lot, a lot of things are going to happen you don't have control over. You might go live in a nursing home. You might end up in a wheelchair. People might come to visit you because you can't get to them. And things will be out of your control, maybe. But I know at the very end, he said, oh, I really want to live. God says, this is the place where things are starting and ending. <laughs> Eternal life does not happen in space and time. Eternal life happens within you. And then you leave this 
world behind and go to the next one. But this one doesn't go on forever. At the very least, that's when you'll know you're really without power. So, Jesus says, he doesn't say, look, build up your ego, build up your self-esteem, build up your confidence, build up all your competencies, get yourself bigger and bigger and bigger. He actually says the opposite. So once you've done that for the first half of your life, the second half is going to be how to give it away, how to let go, how to surrender, how to be humble, how to be a servant, how to be empty. He says then, once you're emptying yourself and surrendering, letting go, letting God, so now you'll find another life underneath you that is really good. Your true life, your true self, your true identity in God, not in your ego. That's what he means, partially at least, when he says, give your life away and you'll start to find it. Let yourself go and find out how to really be alive. There was a preacher uh, in the Episcopal Church, very confident. He was in the first half of life. He was in the first half of kind of, I can do this, I'm in control, um, I'm powerful, I'm competent, I know how to do this, I know what I know, I know what the gospel is, I know what truth is, and I'm going to share it with the people. And he was working in a big church. And um, at clergy conference, where all the clergy gather together, we all get together and we talk about our congregation, talk about you. <laughs> we, we whine and complain and blame all, our, <laughs> blame all of our problems on our terrible congregations. And wouldn't our life be so much better if we had some other church, blah, blah, blah. And, and so the very confident preacher was there. And another clergy person said to me, that guy needs a good divorce. He needs to know what it is to fall down. He needs to know what it is to fall apart. He needs to know what it is to be at the bottom. He needs to know what happens when everything goes wrong. Make him a much better priest. So, in the first half of life, and we do what we're doing in our youth group. Seven habits, highly successful people, highly successful teens. And that's the right thing to do. At that point, you need to build everybody up. Make them strong. The saying that Jesus gave us today is for the second half of life. When things begin to fall down and fall apart and get broken, he says, well, that's okay because if you lose your life, you'll end up finding it at a whole other level in God, not in yourself. I know this is kind of a sophisticated, complex sermon. It's not as simple as sometimes it can be. Maybe I just wanted to say that there are two good, two good things here. At the first half of life, we will build ourselves up. And we will be strong and competent, successful and powerful. We will be like um, Robin Williams when he tells those kids looking into the uh, sports uh, memorabilia case in the movie, Dead Poet Society. He says, Carpe diem, baby. Go get it. It's yours. Suck the marrow out of life. Don't wait. And they're going to be strong and powerful. And they will. Until something happens when they're not. <laughs> and then Jesus will say, look, if you end up giving your life away, you'll, you'll find it in a much different way. If you try to keep hanging on, keep trying to save your life by getting more stuff and more possessions and more fame and more fortune and more power. And he says, that's, in the end, that's not how you're going to win. Because you can never hold on to those things. They'll slip away like sand. They'll be gone. Jesus says, if you let them go, you lose your life. You will find your true self underneath all that stuff. You'll find who you are in God. You'll find who you are as a child of God and a vessel of God. So that's where your really good life is. So Jesus says, what would it gain? What would, be, what would be so good if they gained the whole world? But they lost that true life. So, how do planes fly? The pilot flies them. And the vacuum keeps the wings up. How do you want to have a really great life? Build up your ego. 
build up yourself. That's okay for a while. But then if you really want to fly and know how everything is really work, at the second stage, you give yourself away. Be like Jesus, who became the servant of all, humbled himself, let go, surrendered, even to death on a cross. And they said, ah, that's the life I really want. That's how, how I know who I am in God. So both things are true. Build up your ego for a while, and that'd be great. Second half, let go of your ego and find who you are in God. That'd be even better. Planes fly by the pilot, and they fly by physics. A great life is lived by building up your ego, and in the end, by letting your ego go. I offer this to you in God's name. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen.